Hey, Lewis! <laughs> Did you hear about the art critic that accidentally destroyed an artwork? Ooh, that sounds very arty. Was it like an incredibly fragile, wafer-thin sugar wafer that he accidentally dropped in a puddle and it dissolved? Okay, the artwork was basically a pane of glass with things balanced on top of it. Sure. <laughs> it was, it was, apparently this is worth $20,000. Can you identify any of these objects? Yeah. A feather. A feather. A bit of... A fake fucking... potato. <laughs> <laughs> Tennis ball. Sure. Some and of that, that stuff. was all a glass pane, was it? Yeah, on a pane of glass. So this what art did you do? Critic, did you touch it or something? The art critic, she was so like pissed off at it. She, she was thought, annoyed. Yeah, so she had like, like a, a, a tin of pop. It was empty and she like plonked it down on the thing that the artwork was on top of. It wobbled it, it fell over, smashed. Shit. So she was kind of like, she was gonna leave this piece of rubbish on it as if she was saying, this is rubbish. This thing right. I'm throwing away may as well be part of the exhibit. This shit happens all the time. Fucking art people make anything out of art and they fucking any shit. Like this one guy duct taped some, a banana to the wall, didn't he? Yeah, and like, another guy came along and ate it. Yeah, and they put the, a new banana in and it was still there. I mean, and then it's it's art. It's everything is a piece of crap art. Any art, that's now art. That, what, she's probably made it more valuable. Do you know what I mean? I think you're right, actually. I think because you're that's right. got more of a story, I think. All you need is a little bit of a story, a little bit of a spin on it, and it'll be art. Okay, what have we got here that you would say is, is a piece of art? Right. We've got, we got a potted plant, we've got my orange juice, we've got my mints, we've got, got the keyboard. This rusty bit of bolt hole. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't try and pull out any bits of metal. How about this? There's a bit of like tape stuck to the floor. It's probably there for a reason, Lewis. What about this bit of tape? Oh shit, oh, fuck. Did you just knock over your drink? Oh, I did, You yeah. just spilt drink. <laughs> <laughs> that is it, that's the artwork! That's the, quick, I'll take a picture of it. Quickly take a picture of that spilled bit of drink. Take a picture of it. There we go. Oh my god. Oh, it's disgusting. It's beautiful. And it's only temporary. It's constantly evolving. It's ephemeral. Yeah. That's oh. the word you use. You yeah. Don't just, you don't say temporary, you say it's ephemeral. <laughs> it represents... It's evolving. It represents how precious life is. How it's here one minute and gone the next. It's spreading as like well. It's, it's already changing before our eyes. And if we leave it here, we we'll continue to get worse. Bit. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm like the art critic. <laughs> Oh, no. oh, you've ruined it now. Well, I've made it better. No, it's ruined now. I've ruined you it. You owe me $20,000. What? That's how much this was valued at. In By who? My mind. Well, who valued this? God damn it. A piece it. of glass with some shit on it. Fuck off. Have you heard about the dumb idiot father that buys a 1,000 pound, 19 foot tall dinosaur statue for his four year old son? Okay, so people sometimes do order expensive stuff for their kids, right? Yeah. Like a le like Lego. If you're not careful, what? you can spend a thousand pound on Lego easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sometimes you can accidentally order it twice. <laughs> Shit. Shh, don't, that didn't happen you in still the office. Me for that. So this dad ordered his son a dinosaur. Yeah. But... So... The perils of on online shopping, Lewis. You know what it's like? You see like a statue of something, you're like, oh, that'd be lovely for my son. You click buy it now. Turns out it wasn't like a little statue, but it was a giant 19 foot tall one. The That's fact that it great cost him- value. It cost him a thousand quid. Look at the size of it. It's fucking massive. They had to deliver it by crane. <laughs> How much did that cost? I that's guess not, it was that's not one of the standard shipping options, is it? Crane. I guess it was included. You know, we see like special delivery one or two days, like, you know, DHL, three to four <laughs> weeks and it'll be damaged. But he, he first knew that something was up when he got a message from the delivery company saying it can't fit in our truck. Right. So it's put it on the back of like, uh, like a flatbread. flatbread. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> They put a layer of hummus. Yeah. And then on top of it, like a giant falafel, they put the dinosaur. <laughs> what? Look at that! That fits in a truck! It's crazy. Well, his head doesn't. His head's sticking out. Where did this come from? So there's a story here, right? So his son Theo, who's four years old, 
he wanted a dinosaur because he watched the Disney classic Dinosaur. Have you ever seen the Disney film Dinosaur? No. And he was like, I want the biggest carnotaur you've ever seen. Where did it come from? Who sold it for a thousand pounds? I searched and searched for the one that he saw, but I couldn't find it. Then his mum sent me a link on Facebook about Tamba Park in Jersey selling all their equipment, which included their dinosaurs. Where is this? In America? It's in uh, Guernsey. What, the fucking Channel Islands? Yeah. Where Sips lives? Well, uh, an island over. Where did they, sh they shut down the park, the dinosaur park in Jersey? How did they get it from one, like, one island to the other? Crane, said. They can't sh... How long's the fucking arm of the crane? And they're quite Cause... close together. They're not that fucking close. Theo didn't want to go to school as he didn't want to leave him. He thought he'd be home alone. He wanted to take him on the yellow crane. He said he was hungry, so he cooked fish fingers and fed him. <laughs> what, a good, what a good boy. This is a lovely story. And there he is in the garden. Oh, he looks great. That oh, kid he looks is spoiled am... rotten and what I hope a he lucky realizes. boy. What is that? He's wearing like a collar. He's, like got a have a metal... chain. He's got to have a chain around his neck. You don't want him running loose around fucking Guernsey. Right, I see. Yeah. That's not real grass. Is it? That's AstroTurf. How do you know? That's not real, is it? It's not a real dinosaur either. What? Uh, <laughs> let's fucking move on. Have you heard about sugar ants? They don't like sugar anymore. So instead of sugar, they're drinking pee. I beg your pardon? They're drinking pee. Piss? So there was research done in the University of South Australia, in Australia, where the kangaroos live. Presumably that's why they used kangaroo pee in the experiments. Um, and it turns out that sugar ants consuming urine may help reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, well that's like an additional Somehow. step. First of all, Sugar ants. Yeah. You had, imagine you had like a box of sugar ants here. Yeah. And you gave them like Coke. Right. And on the other hand, kangaroo piss. What about? They prefer. I the thought piss. you could. I thought you were going to offer them Coke or Pepsi, <laughs> and they prefer the Pepsi. Coke, Pepsi, and or that piss. Proves that they like piss. <laughs> okay. So urine. I'm really struggling. When urine decomposes, it re releases ammonia. Okay. Um, ammonia turns into nitrous oxide, which is a very bad greenhouse gas. It's 300 times worse than carbon dioxide. Sure, 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 sure. So, if sugar ants consume urine, that nitrous oxide isn't released. Sure, 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 sure. sure so sure. they will sure. save the world. Sure, so it's like a catalytic converter for cows. Yeah. They thought about installing these on cows anyway, like a fart box on the back of a cow that would collect up all the cow farts. <laughs> a fart box? Well, like, I don't know, like a fart tube or something. Or bag. Or well, something. cows are already basically fucking robots anyway. They're like cyborgs. They're basically cyborgs anyway. Cowboys. And we put like an, a, a, a fart catalytic converter on the back anyway. Right. People are thinking about installing these on cows because it's the farts that are the problems. Okay, But yeah. no one's thought about the piss. You know, what are we doing about all that? I don't, uh, first of all, I didn't really think that, that piss was a problem, but I assume what Turns we out, do now is we're going to have all those cows piss into yeah. a load of ants. Yeah. And the ants love it. They love getting pissed on. Yes. So do we need to drink our own piss? Is that what this is saying? I don't, I'm not sure what happens when a human consumes pee. Because I'm just thinking, I do a lot of recycling. You know, yeah. I put like my... Plastics in the plastic box. Yeah. Cardboard's in the cardboard box. Yeah. And then there could be a piss tank. A piss tank? Or a piss bottle. You piss into a bottle. And give it to the ants. Many of our viewers may already do this. <laughs> It'll probably turn out that instead of actually using ants, they'll use like some enzyme or something that what they create. What do eat ants? Are we saving some okay. animals though? Like, is this gonna so make more ants? What you're asking me is, Are what ants animal is... eats ants when there is an animal called the ant? Well, no, but what else eats ants? The correct answer is aardvark, presumably. No, but I think like, I don't know if aardvarks or anties eat ants. I know what it about... sounds like they should, but I don't think they do. I think they eat fruit or something. What about geckos? <laughs> I didn't, don't quote me on this. I'm pretty sure like, isn't it one of those things that doesn't actually do what it says on the, on the name? The name's wrong. 
I don't think Ant-Eaters are eating ants. I think they're, they're happy with a banana. Ant-Eaters, turns out all they eat is ass. But st- <laughs> Should be called <laughs> ass eaters. But some animals do eat ants, like some birds, I'm that sure. big, long, wet nose. Just <laughs> Some birds are eating shitloads of ants. Okay. And I like saving birds and things and animals and cats. So what you're saying is the worry is that the birds will eat the ants that are drinking the piss. So we need more cats to eat the birds that will stop the birds from eating the ants from drinking the piss. If everyone's going to be drinking piss and there's going to be loads more ants drinking piss, we need to make sure we deal with the ants. Here's the problem. I don't want to get ants everywhere. The source of the problem is the piss, though. <laughs> We've got too much piss to deal with. No, we just get more Can't ants. Can't we just cut off the piss? We get loads of ants. Ants are easy. But the more ants we have, the more cats we need just to deal with the birds. Cool. They're eating the ants and they're drinking the piss. <laughs> I'm just saying, we can save the planet if we work out the ant situation, okay? Okay. We need to balance the numbers of ants, the amount of piss, the number of cats, cats birds, there's a very uh, delicate balance. We can find it. And this is what these scientists are doing, I assume. Come on, Dr. Simon Clark. It's up to you to figure this out. Hey, Lewis, I know that you've heard about the Barrel Man. What? I don't know, the web page is completely <laughs> blank for some fucking reason. <laughs> He's back, back on Earth. What a relief. He broke his previous record. Um, and it's now the world record, the Guinness world record of being on a ba- in a barrel on the top of a pole is 78 days. Good Lord. So his previous record was 67 days. So he beat it by 11 days. We should get him on the show, this show. We should get him. We can fly him in. Let's fly him over here. From Dolstrom. And we should do an interview. We should just have him here. There's a spare bit like this. Can we have We're him not using us? this whole area. Oh my god. Let's not put him on the sofa. Let's put him in a barrel. Oh my god. Yeah, let's get a this barrel for him. Really I don't know his, if he likes it. That's his thing. We don't want likes. him to get all horny. Oh. What if... But it's okay if we do. Mm. What? <laughs> 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 Sorry, I misread the situation <laughs> entirely. Yeah. My apologies. I don't think they cared, did they, really, about him this time? He didn't get the publicity he wanted. I it guess wasn't not. It was a big news story. I mean, the only people where. that have covered him is us, I think. And his wife's complained about it a few times. She was. She. She wanted nothing to do with this. She doesn't wants to have n- no involvement. She never visited him. His agent, though. Because when you're in prison... Didn't also want to have anything to... What do you mean when you're in prison? When you're in prison, you get conjugal... Conjurous visits. A wizard comes. (laughs) You get... (laughs) Pulls a rabbit out of a hat. You get conjugal visits. Right? Okay. Does it the same when you're in a barrel on top of a pole? Does his wife come up and, you know, they... It's not a hole. There's a hole in the barrel. It fucking wobbles. Whoa! (laughs) Whoa! Oh no. Don't come knocking when this barrel's rocking. Rocking. Yeah. Yeah. She climbed up his pole. There he is. There he is. Fucking crazy old fucker. Barrel man. Oh, he's got a toothbrush there. He's got in that little. Probably. Yeah, so you've got to keep, keep oh, that, God. think about your dental hygiene. I don't, I don't like heights. I would hate to be up there in a barrel. What happens when it rains? Does he put the lid on? <laughs> I wonder what they're talking about. Oh, we think it's lovely. This is the best thing that's ever happened in Dolstrom. <laughs> oh, he's such a dream boat. He's put Dolstrom on the map. Me and him exchange letters. Oh. I send him letters and he sends them back down again. His wife don't like it though. Cow. <laughs> oh, fuck. Barrel Man. I'm glad we got an update on Barrel yeah. Man. Yeah. I was worried about him. <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> I really don't give a shit. <laughs> uh. 
Have you ever wanted to taste the Yogscast's brown water? Well, now's your chance with Yog Labs Test Roast Coffee. That's right, the minions over at Yog Labs have been working non stop on a Yogscast coffee and have finally come out with something that isn't absolute shit. Yog Labs Test Roast has a taste bud tingling mix of cherry, brown sugar, and chocolate. Oh my goodness me! Head over to store.yogscast.com and buy yours today, you bastard!